Hello everyone, welcome back to The Plumber Den. In this week's episode, I'm going to build a rustic stone house. Although this is kind of a, in the same field as some of my other projects is a generic kind of piece of terrain. Uh, definitely uh, I have a fire on the frontier. It's a, a blood and plunder expansion on the top of my mind when I built it, but it's not necessarily for that. Uh, I kind of actually gave it a, kind of a bit of a fantasy feel to it. Uh, it could be used uh, for Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing, right? Uh, um, it definitely has that kind of feel to it. Uh, and also it can be used uh, as a farm in Europe or something, and maybe I can use it in Blood and Valor or Bolt Action. And So I kind of wanted to make it kind of very, uh, very generic. Uh, but I did put elements on it uh, to fit in other, other games. As I like to do, I like to have multi-use uh, terrain. Uh, so this uh, piece is no exception. So let's take a look at it. This is the finished product. Um, this is what we're going to be uh, building today. And let's see if I can get it up here for you. So this is it right here. And you can see it's kind of a... I kind of did a little bit of different uh, stone work on it. I really made it uh, really uh, rustic looking, kind of like they cleared their farms field out uh, uh, and found these pieces of stones and, and built this building with it. Uh, I've done a satch roof, uh, never done that before. Uh, and uh, it was kind of a, a different experience. So we're gonna go over on how to uh, build that. Uh, I think it came out really good. I was really happy how this turned out. Uh, so there's just some different elements in here that I've never explored uh, before. Some different materials, uh, crafting materials I used before. So just kind of giving you an overall look of uh, the whole uh, uh, piece here. All right, uh, so that's pretty much what we're going to build. Now this is kind of a, a two-parter. Now it looks like it's done. Well, it is the house. Uh, but if you remember in previous episodes, I like to base my uh, terrain. So the plan is to uh, build this uh, kind of like a farmstead. So we're going to have like a stone in uh, kind of a you know property that this uh, this house is sitting on. Uh, so that's going to be next week's episode where I kind of want to work on kind of uh, an extension of this piece of terrain. Um, and uh, so this, and this week we're just going to do that, uh, do the uh, house, and then next week we'll we'll work on uh, that other project. All right, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information on when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table, let's start crafting, and let's start painting. Okay, just going to start off by going through some of the materials I'm going to be using for this project. Uh, you can see I've cut a bunch of uh, more blocks out of insulation foam. Used some dollar store foam board to uh, create pretty well a skeleton of the house. And I'm just showing you the platform I plan on using. Uh, I do want to try to build this in the second half as a little cart that I foreground. Uh, and I want to kind of add it to this little farmstead. Uh, but that'll be in the uh, next project, uh, next week's uh, episode. All right, so it's showing you that uh, teddy bear fur that I plan on using for the thatched roof. All right, so then I started with these uh, bricks. So really, all I did was uh, cut them into all sorts of uh, odd shapes. So I didn't really do a uniformed look to them. Uh, and I added them to my coffee tin and shook them around mainly because i wanted that rustic look to it so i just kind of gave them all different shapes and sizes so then i started working on uh, the doors and windows you can see i got my little metal ruler here and this is kind of i use that actually as my shape for the doors and windows uh, and it kind of just uh, fits perfectly in there now, i kind of have the door a little off the ground because i plan on putting a one little step underneath it and I'm just showing you, I plan on cutting those all out. I want to do one window in the front, one window on the side, and I'll probably do a window up in the second floor in the roof. So there's the bricks all completed, all shooken up, and they're ready to uh, to be uh, installed. 
So I'm just showing you that I, as I mentioned before, got to cut that out. And the door, I'm going to go back to uh, the previous, uh, I think in the destroyed building, I went to use real wood. I'm going to use uh, foam again, and I'm just going to carve it out, the door pattern. I want it to have a more extreme look to it. So I just used my trusty dowel, and you can see I uh, just worked out the uh, pattern of the wood right into the foam. And I was just showing you the edges because I really want to make sure it goes right off to the edges. So you have a, you know, it's... Uh, it looks like wood planks uh and there's the uh stone kind of like walkway i plan on putting underneath so i'm just showing you that i want that one window on the one side and that's where we're going to put the door on the opposite side uh that bead i kind of mentioned that in the docks that i use it for those buoys but i, I use it for doorknobs mostly uh, I'm going to frame it out with some balsa wood, which I really liked from the uh, destroyed building uh, construction. I really think that really worked well. Um, so I'm going to use these matchsticks and balsa wood to uh, frame out these windows. And I should show you that bead again. These are great. Uh, I actually use them for markers in my Blood and Plunder game too. So <laughs> they have kind of multi-purposes. I just have bags of these beads. Uh, and then I'm just going to show you that I plan on uh, gluing it all together with uh, that white, white glue, tacky glue. So this is after I've uh, framed the windows out for the most part. The balsa wood's been added. Matchsticks have been added. And I kind of did multi-layers and I plan on putting a cap on there just to kind of frame it all out. And then in the middle, I'm going to do uh, uh, matchsticks framed out in the middle. And I'm just going to use uh, white glue to glue these together. I just recommend using that cutting board that I have everything on. It's a good way to uh, to measure everything out. The little blocks are perfect for doing windows uh, to make sure your, your matchsticks are straight. So then I cut out. Uh, this is going to be a little different. I cut out a piece of insulation foam that I'm going to use as a chimney, but instead of carving the chimney out, uh, I decided to make it a little skinnier, and I'm going to glue the bricks to the outside of it. Uh, I just want to kind of give it a more realistic look, uh, and uh, I, I plan on gluing it on the outside instead. So I'm just showing you, I glued a couple of sides of the wall uh, together first, <clears throat> and then I uh, am going to address the windows. So I don't want to be able to see through, there isn't going to be any interior on this, even though you can put your minis underneath it, because uh, the bottom won't be there. I put the, uh, I'm going to put that... Uh, parchment paper on the back and that way you can see the tea light glow through but you can't see in the building similar to the Tudor style building I did so that's after I've completed it I've glued the doors on added a couple of matchstick framing uh, and you can see I put some support in the middle of it uh, and on the top just to give it a overall strength in uh, the entire structure uh, I am planning on painting it all which will also give it more structure and I just showed you I paint the back on. So everything's glued together. Uh, the back actually and the supports I did was hot glue. Uh, the front frames I just did it with white glue. Uh, mainly just for time purposes, just to quickly glue it together. All right, so sometimes, I, like I said before, I get a little impatient. <laughs> and I just want to get it done fast, so I put some hot glue. Um, but I try not to do it too much on the outside because the hot glue sometimes leaves bubbles and it's hard to get around it where the white glue uh, dries pretty clear. Uh, so just showing you that I plan on putting the bricks on. So you can see that the bricks are all in different shapes. I didn't make it a uniformed uh, kind of look. It's really going to have a rustic uh, kind of a looks more like a cabin or well, but it's going to be a frontier home, right? It's just made out of like field stones and stuff and just put on there. So then I decided to, I went to Michael's actually looking for a charm or something with with some a skeleton on it, and I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, I went to a dollar store, and I just, well, you know what, I'm just going to make my own out of foam. So I carved that little that little uh, bull head skeleton there. Uh, I just wanted to add a little more detail to uh, emphasize it being kind of a rustic far, uh, frontier home. So I put that that skull on the front of the door. I think it came out pretty good. All right, so this is a, kind of one of the first steps of painting uh, is, uh, of course, the uh, black multi-surface folk art paint. 
Uh, I got to a point where I need to paint it now. So what I've done so far, uh, I'm going to cover it all in this craft paint. And then this is after I've left it dry for 24 hours. So it's all good shape. Everything's sturdy. Everything's nice and tight. And that's the way you want it. So it's easy to work with afterwards. So we're planning on moving to the roof now. Uh, and the thatched roof. So I started off by using the cereal boxes. Uh, cardstock here. And I cut a little notch out. Uh, mainly to fit around the chimney. Uh, and the reason why I have the shiny side up. Uh, well, one reason I'm going to cover it with uh, fur anyways. Uh, but it'll, it'll absorb a little bit of moisture too. Because we are going to cover that fur with a lot of paint. And I want it to be able to absorb a little of the moisture, um, or not absorb as much as the moisture. So I went with that uh, shiny side up. So then I cut two pieces of uh, um, dollar store foam board into like triangles, perfect triangles. And I use that to frame out the window that I'm going to have upstairs. And then I cut a hole in the roof. So that's why I kind of left that support, so I left it open in the middle. Um, because uh, I wanted to eventually put a window and I want the light to shine through. <clears throat> so now I'm just showing you that I cut these at an angle. And the reason why I did that is when I put the rooftop on, I wanted to uh, fit properly. And this is the front of the window. So I kind of cut out a little hole in that little piece, put some uh, more matchsticks on there, and put some more parchment paper on the, on the back. Uh, and I glued it at a, I cut it at an angle so it fits on that roof properly. Uh, and then, like, of course, those two sides I showed you. Uh, that way, the uh, I'm going to make little caps for that roof. Well, sit on there properly. So now I use white glue to glue this together. And here, there's the caps I was talking about. So I just cut a few more pieces uh, of cardstock. And then I framed it out uh, with... Uh, there's actually uh, some matchsticks... And uh, those are coffee stir sticks, actually. They were a little bit smaller, uh, just to frame out that window better. <clears throat> so I'm just showing you that I did both sides. And now we're going to move to the thatched roof. So this is teddy bear fur. So uh, I found it at uh, the fabric store here in town. It's kind of, I just found it in the remnants uh, clearance bin. Uh, I probably would have gone... Would have been better to go with a darker color uh, teddy bear fur, but they only had white. Uh, it's just going to require a little bit more paint. So I just used some really good fabric scissors. So I recommend use good fabric scissors to cut it. Uh, and I just cut it into the shape of the... I even cut that little notch into it uh, where the chimney was. So this is how I got it around the window. I cut a little square. And as you can see, it looks uh, pretty fuzzy. <laughs> uh, it looks more like uh, Nick Nolte's uh, mugshot uh, or a comb over here. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, we're we're gonna we're gonna address that. But uh, and essentially, I just hot glued these two pieces to the uh, rooftop on either side, and then I'm planning on using a comb. And why I'm using that comb is I'm gonna comb that black craft paint into that hairs, and we're gonna put a lot in there. And what actually happened is I ended up combing it in there and I couldn't get right deep in there because that it was white. I had to actually end up using my fingers and I just really kind of worked it in like I was shampooing my hair. <laughs> and I really worked it in there nice and uh, so it's completely black. Uh, and then I went over uh, with a brush here and I'm just kind of just kind of shaping it the way I want. So uh, that's the real challenge with uh, a thatched roof is uh, if you use kind of a straw or something like that, it's hard to form it around the shape you want. Uh, but using this softer fur and using craft paint, I'm able to uh, uh, shape this the way I want to, really. Uh, kind of round it on the edges, get it nice and tight around that uh, window. And you know what? I actually worked this for quite some time. About, I would say about 45 minutes just brushing it uh, and I got it to this point where it's actually a pretty uh, pretty form fit uh, I didn't show in this video but I did add a little bit more to the top um, and uh, just kind of where the gap was that separated the two uh, pieces that I, I glued on and I painted that uh, over also and I'm just showing you I added uh, that uh, 
I added a little brace at the front because I want to put, hang some like garlic or flowers or stuff out the front of the, just to give it a more farm look. Uh, and I added that little piece to the chimney. I just wanted to show you that. All right, so now we're going to start our paint. So real brown, uh, usual uh, undercoats that I always use. Uh, and we're going to dry brush this whole thing, including the roof, uh, with this uh, real brown. So I'm just going to show you a little bit. I know that uh, in many of my videos, this is a very a similar technique, uh, but this might be the first time uh, to my channel. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to show you a little bit of how I, how I do that. So I kind of cover the whole thing, but I don't want to cover uh, all the black, right? You want to kind of have a little bit of it showing, uh, and that's really going to lay your shadows in. So this is how it should look when you're... When you're done so you got a little bit of brown you can see you can see there's black areas still uh which is great that's going to give you the shadowing that you want and the depth you want when you paint it so then we're going to move uh, uh, to the bark brown that's the next color i always use and this is just really a lighter brown and then we're going to go to the pablo i kind of picked up the camel there for a sec but that's what i'm going to use on the stone uh but go to the bark brown then the pablo uh, pablo is kind of an orange color um, so I'm going to put two of those two colors on, and we're not really going to watch that. So I'm already done here. This is the finished product. This is after I added the Bark Brown and the Pablo. So you can kind of see uh, that's what it looks like. So I still got my darks in there. I got some shadowing in there. I got some colors, nice colors going on on the roof there. Uh, and now I'm going to switch to my Army Painter dry brush. And now we're going to use the Camel. And we're going to focus on uh, the stones. Um, but I also add a little bit of this uh, to the door. And I wanted to add it to the, the uh, skull detail at the top of the door. Just kind of laying some light colors in. Uh, which we're going to add more colors to. So I'm just pointing to that. And I just do circular motions. Um, and, and just kind of... I'm not overly careful some of it spills over the door that's fine we're gonna add some more colors to the door um but uh i just kind of worked this whole thing all the chimney all the back i'm just kind of showing you and the skull the skull up top so i'm just going to kind of hit all that with that camel color so it should look like this you can see i added a little bit to the door i just wanted to add a little lighter tones to it look like it's a little worn uh, and you can see all those good colors already we have in there. Uh, but I don't stop there with my stonework. I go to the uh, desert yellow. And uh, we go to uh, skeleton bone. And uh, necrotic uh, flesh. Um, and uh, last is mummy robes. So these are the four colors that I've used in, in several of my other projects. Uh, and it's my standard mix that I use um to do my stones so i, I kind of lay them down in the exact order i just showed you them in so you're kind of going dark to light and i just do circular motions dry brush it all on and you're just adding those oranges and beiges and uh the necrotic flesh of little greens so you all those to the stones and you get all those nice lovely colors going on uh in the stonework so again, I'm just going to show you a little bit of it, but we're not going to go through every color. Uh, I apply it on uh, the same on all the colors. But as you go lighter, use less paint. So this is your finished product on your stones. Of course, we're going to add some black and some other colors to it um, to really uh, add some more depth, even more to those stones. So now we're going to move to a color I've been using a lot. It's called Skeleton Horde. It's a contrast paint by Citadel. And I, I've been kind of using it to... Do a lot of things, really. I use it more like a wash than I use it for, uh, for anything else. Uh, and I added some to the roof. I added it to that skull detail in the front, a little bit on the uh, stones on the walkway. And I kind of just touched it like it was uh, dirt running down in different places. So then I went to a yellow ochre, uh, real brown mixture. So it's kind of like a gold color, similar to what I use on my ship uh, decks. And I'm going to dry brush this on to this thatched roof. The good thing about uh, using that craft paint, it's now dry and hardened, and you can dry brush it. So I'm just showing you, I went. it looks pretty bright because I added 
the yellow ochre uh, over top of it uh, after I added that mixture. So now you got two tones of that. So then I went to this uh, basilic uh, brown. It's kind of a darker version of the color I put down. I, I found the roof was a little too bright, so I added that on there to, in a few areas to darken it up on the top and on the sides. So then I went to that dark stone. Uh, and this is really a color I like to use to add some grays uh, to the wood details. So really the framing around the window, some on the door. I uh, just like adding uh, some grays to it. Uh, it's kind of, I do the opposite. <laughs> I use tan colors for the stones and I use uh, I use uh, grays on the doors. So I'm just showing you kind of some of the areas that I, uh, that I was uh, hitting with that gray. It really is just all the framing, the door. Um... And the framing on the other side, some framing on the in the top window, anywhere where there's some wood exposed. So I'm going to the matte black uh, by Army Painter here, uh, and I really like the flat flatness of matte black by Army Painter. It's really great, uh, and I use this for uh, you know smoke um, details. I kind of did it on the bridge. Uh, I've done it on a few of my stoneworks now. It, um, could be dead plant life, uh, and mostly this is from the chimney. I'm going to put a little bit on the roof too, so it looks like the smoke has gone in a certain direction and, and it's kind of stained uh, the, the satched roof and just gives it a more realistic look. So I'm just going to add this uh, black details and parts of the building. So that's kind of uh, what I was talking about, just kind of, you can tell that chimney's been well used and it's kind of darkened that area. So then I'm going to go to this uh, more Fang um, Brown. And I like to use it on the woodwork as well. Just giving you one uh, kind of a look over of where I put the black uh, on this uh, on this house. And, you know, uh, I don't show you all the different details, but I sometimes go back and I added a little bit of black in certain areas. I even added some to the thatched roof. And um, it's just kind of uh, wherever I felt it was a little too bright, I added some black to it. So you can see that this is kind of gives it a nice... Uh, you know, maybe the wood's a little fresher in the center, or a little worn out there. Um, I like the contrasting colors on there. Uh, it just gives it a little more weathered look to the wood. And uh, that's what I'm putting on there right now. So I'm just hitting the window up uh, on the top there. Uh, just off camera a little bit. but So I'm going to a strong tone wash. And uh, I'm kind of giving my rain details that I usually do. I put some on that skull on the front, uh, all the bricks down the bottom. Uh, I also I went to a Miller military shader and then some army green to add some a little bit of uh, green plant life, and just uh, applied it to the bottom as well. So then I went to a matte white. And uh, I kind of just want to hit some of the stones a little bit, uh, added a little bit to the skull on the front of the horns, just added a little more uh, uh, contrast to, to these uh, stonework. Uh, I find that old stones usually have little white spots all over it, uh, and I just want to add a little bit more uh, details to these stones uh, and uh, the uh, skull that's hanging above the door. So I kind of go over the entire building in different areas, just wherever I feel that I wanted to add some of that uh, white detail. All right, so now the paint's done. I'm going to move on to some add some plant life. So this is kind of a, a resin crafting florals I got from Michaels. Um, but uh, they, they, have, uh, they look really good for uh, plant life. That you can add to your dioramas. Now, normally you would sink this in resin and make kind of like costume jewelry or whatever, but I'm going to use it to. I want them kind of have like a some garlic or some plant life hanging from that pole that I put there that uh, this person has hanging outside their their house. Uh, and then I go to my grass green step grass uh, um, flockings that I mix together, and I assort it. Uh, you know, tufts from Army Painter. And I'm just going to add some plant life to the bottom. So I got that 
paintbrush there, just kind of holding it so it glues in place. Uh, my little garlic uh, string there. And I'm just showing you all the uh, uh, flocking that I added. And I did add a few tufts in there, one by the door there. Uh, and some on the side here. I, had, I put a little bit of a ledge there because I was planning on putting a little bit of plant life on the bottom. Of course, when I base this and put it in its little property, uh, there'll be lots more. All right, let's take one more look at that stone house on the frontier. So I'm really happy how this project turned out. Uh, can't wait to get started on the basing of it uh, and uh, complete it to, to about, you know, the full vision that I had for this project. Uh, just to give it a look at my miniatures here. Got some English regulars taking on some native and French Canadian forces. All right, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first hand information on when I uh, start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.